Welcome to Fight Waves. Audio Journeys by Kung Fu Academic. I'm Vercha Partikova. And I would like to take you behind the scenes of fighting, living in a training camp in Thailand, and my lifelong journey through the martial arts. I am the Kung Fu Academic earned my PhD in sports psychology, after which I decided to leave academia to become a professional fighter. Step with me into the ring to share the raw reality, the continuous search for mental strength and all the ups and downs. Today I want to talk about self-talk and the inner monologue. And uh, I had this idea today uh, during my BGG training And I found it quite funny because I realized what is going on in my head and that I'm kind of getting like instructions. So I was, I was, uh, I was in the class and I was, uh, I was rolling and then I realized that what is going on in my mind is like things like get the wrist, control the hips, make sure you don't lose the grip, you know, defend the choke, fight the hands, fight the hands, things like that. And then I'm like, it, it doesn't, it doesn't actually feel like I am talking to me. It's like, who, who is talking in my head? So it was kind of, kind of funny because I didn't also realize that when I spar in MMA class, it's a little bit different because then it feels like I am talking to myself Then I, I hear things in my head such as uh, try that again or that was a good that was a good entry or almost you almost got it or see there you go things like that which is a little bit different than in BJJ where actually I'm getting instructions and I'm thinking where where is it coming from it's like my mind when I'm asleep is like studying some BJJ guidebook and then when it watches me rolling it's like oh my god she's so bad <laughs> so it's sending me like instructions but that made me think about how much we are not aware of our self-talk and our inner monologue and it is such an important thing not even Not only in fighting or in martial arts, but like in anything, in anything we do. Today, when I was getting ready to record this episode, uh, I was having dinner and I was listening to a podcast, the Ed Milet show. And funny enough, uh, in that episode, I was listening to, he was talking about uh, self-confidence and how we talk to ourselves and self-doubts. And really interesting thing that he said, and that really resonates with with like how I'm trying to work on my on my self-talk and my inner monologue is that we are not born with self-doubt. This is something that, that we learn on the way, something that is installed in us. Like babies, they have no self-doubts. They, they don't go, you know, oh, maybe I should not jump off the table. Instead, they're like, yay, let's do it, let's try it. You know, little kids. So where where did it go? How come that we are so full of self-doubts? And then inside our heads we are like, oh, maybe maybe I shouldn't do this. Maybe I am not good enough to do this. Maybe I'm too scared or that guy is too strong or that girl is too too fast. What What if I fail? What if everyone sees me? What if I get submitted by a white belt or, or anything, anything like that? It is really so important. Every time I have a I have a fight, I write down a list of goals that I want to achieve. Because I realize that if I don't do that and I look back at the fight, it's so subjective for me to say if it was a good fight or a bad fight. It's it's just a feeling, you know? I can I can look at did I did I win or did I lose, but that doesn't really mean that I fought well. Maybe I lost, but I fought well. Maybe I won, but it wasn't it wasn't a very good fight. So I write down a list of goals, and those can be you know things like technical things, like I don't know, uh, 
throw a good low kick or uh, uh, go for a takedown uh, twice in a round or something like that. But also I try to uh, put some goals that are about my my, my, my mental state or uh, the way I'm thinking. And there is always uh, there is always one goal and, and that's to stay positive in between the rounds. And I have been doing this for maybe the past five fights and I really see it's it's changing now. It's it's been a long it's been a long way, but now I feel like it's been changing a little bit and my mind is not so much my enemy but more of my my help, my my supporter, my, my assistant. So sometimes in the fight I realize that I am I'm trying to keep it uh, quite positive like if I'm getting beaten up, I remember I still have these thoughts such as, oh, let's, let's see what can I do, uh, trying to figure out, you know, what I can, what, what, how, how to switch the situation, how to turn it upside down, what to do, uh, what to change, to, 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 change to, to change the fight. And I, I always give credit to myself, or at least I, I try, that I think this is really important to have. And uh, I'm I'm quite proud sometimes that when I'm when I'm losing a really tough fight, I remember that until the last moment I'm still trying to find a way out, and I'm still trying to cheer for myself like, try this, try it again, how about this? And and that's really important. And also it's it's really hard, it's really hard because if I don't watch my mind. It goes to places and it does things, and I don't want it to do, you know, things against me. But it seems like my mind loves to, you know, pick on me and tell me what I what I need to uh, I need to get better or what other people are good at, and then it's not really working for me, but it's working against me. One thing I do uh, on purpose when I go, when I spar with someone who is better than me or someone I'm afraid of or, or someone that uh, I know uh, submitted me before, I try to shape my thoughts into, let's see what I can do here. Which is, first of all, it's positive. Second, it's, it's about the, the, the process. It's about, it's about the skill, not the outcome. I may still lose the round, I may still get submitted, I may still, you know, eat some punches, but let's see if if I can get one step better. And then also it it gives me no no pressure for myself. It's not really like, oh, you really you really need to go um uh, and have a different outcome than last time or uh last time she submitted you, now you need to uh, you know, make sure she doesn't submit you again. This this would give me pressure. But if I think like, let's see what I can do. Let's let's see how far I can get, how far I can go. That's a, that's different. It's positive. It's mastery, uh, skill oriented, and there's no pressure. It's supporting me instead of going against me. Another name that I would like to mention here is David Neve, the Big Dave. Uh, who is a performance coach, a mental performance coach. And and when we had a session together, he always put lots of emphasis on uh, self-talk and the way how, how, how we talk about ourselves and how we talk to ourselves and how every kind of self-doubt or uh, a negative thought contaminate our mind until we can't see our goal anymore, and I think this is a genius way how to how to think about think about this and how much importance it has. Uh, some of the exercises that I'm using to uh, control my self talk is um, after training I think of three things that I manage to do. Uh, let's say in sparring, I'm like. Okay, so I, I finished the takedown, I defended that choke and it was really hard and today I was really aware of my of my distance, for example. And this helped me to reflect on what was going well 
and to you know switch that negative talk into a positive talk. Also, I try to write things down, um, especially before a fight. I write things, uh, I list things that I am getting better at, or things that I I I believe that I am I'm, I'm good at, or or my strengths. And then also I journal. And for for those of you who don't journal, uh, it's not really like you know my dear diary, but journaling. Uh, doesn't matter if if uh, if you do like a structured one where you uh, perhaps answer questions that that you give to yourself every morning or every evening, or if you just do a free version where you just just free write whatever it's on your mind, but it gives you clarity because that's that's the way how you can tidy up in your mind, and you can see uh, you can see with a clarity, and it's very it's very. Uh, refreshing but it's it's very calming as well so just uh, a reminder that you need to be aware we all need to be aware of our self-talk of all the words that we are using in our mind when we talk to ourselves and about ourselves and that is the first step on the way to the second step which is to control our self-talk so it is working for us not against us isn't it awesome to have someone sitting on your shoulder the entire time cheering for you? And that's exactly what you want to get. To have a positive self-talk and inner monologue. To have your own personal supporter inside your head. And then another funny thing that happened to me today was uh, that, you know, sometimes the, the voice just comes out of nowhere and today today I was uh, I was uh, rolling with my with my training partner who is a very good wrestler and uh, he was beating beating me up and then my voice in my head suddenly suddenly told me well why don't you just you know take it to the why why why, why always like stand up like try try to uh, face him more on the on the BJJ side than like uh, wrestling side and I thought wow that's so smart where, 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 where did it come from? You know, who, who, whose fault is that? And it was, a, it was a great round. He still beat me up, but, but it was a great round. So just a reminder: be aware of your self-talk. Try to switch it to positive and control it to become your own biggest supporter. Make sure you follow me on my socials where you can also ask questions or you subscribe to my irregular newsletter on my website.